नमस्कार स्थापकाय च धर्म से सर्वधर्मस्वरूपिने अवतार वरिष्ठाय रामकृष्णाय ते नम With reverential salutations to the lotus feet of Swami Ramakrishna Paramahamsa, Swami Vivekananda, and all the Swami Jis involved in this noble cause, the Ramakrishna Mission, I am extremely grateful to you for having selected me and giving me this opportunity to address the youth of India. They are the one. who are going to define the next 25 years of india and this is the right time where all the spiritual and motivating efforts of swami vivekananda need to be realized and put into practice we need to rise arise we need to be awake and we need to fight a new battle which is from a technology perspective 75 years post independence we have realized the importance of social independence the next to 25 years we should have focused action plan to realize what we may term as technology independence then is a need for a collective effort among youth with a sense of participation with a sense of commitment to the nation to build in technologies that will make india completely independent from foreign nations to build certain essential technologies that are needed for the social and economic growth of our country the next 25 years as termed the amrit kal for india is going to be extremely crucial for taking up certain proactive focused action so that at 2047 the 100th year of independence india can proudly pronounce technology leadership the main important inspiration that we need to get from swami vivekananda at this point of time is the self confidence just let us imagine the chicago meet where an indian probably the only indian in that whole gathering had gone all the way from india to chicago through ship faced all the hard time of travel reached this place and started on a very very different note an unconventional note brothers and sisters rather than ladies and gentlemen what an impact it created for somebody who is completely a loner in that particular group in terms of the origin or the country of origin and to make a conventional unconventional address which caught attention of millions and till today we are talking about see the amount of self confidence the great swami vivekananda had i think that is something or probably the single most thing that every youth in our country should aspire to and should take inspiration from that is what we call as atma vishwas yes necessary and sufficient condition for atma nirbharta is atma vishwas if you want to become stubbornly self sufficient there is the necessity for us to become completely self confident we should believe that we can do and certainly we can do that there are many priority areas on which we need to concentrate with the self confidence that we can do one of the very important things that we need to keep in mind when we take up a challenge and win that challenge without any obstruction it is victory suppose we take up a challenge and win that challenge with obstruction 
then that is history. We are all here to make history. And that is the most important message which a big saintly at the same time charming personality like Swami Vivekananda has basically given us as a lesson. So, with this noble objective of creating history, let us look at many priority areas today. As a country, we have our own DNA, we have our own way of living, we have our own culture, a very rich culture, we have our own practices and to develop technology that will adhere to our DNA, that will adhere to make our way of living, improve our way of living, make our way of living much smoother, that technology need to be customized for our country. That technology should be reliable to be used here. A simple example is a vaccine. Today we are all alive. We are able to run the institutions. We are able to meet each other because we have a protection in terms of a vaccine. The vaccines that worked in India were customized in India, were made in India. The vaccines of the Western world could not be used in India. The reason is there was temperature and environment differences in the way it could be used. Some of the Western vaccines needed very, very low temperatures to be stored and shipped, which could not be economically or practically even feasible in India. The vaccines developed in India suited the Indian environment and that is precisely the reason today we are able to go and vaccinate crores and crores of people. Note we have 140 crore population. So vaccine is a lesson that COVID has taught us which basically talks about the need for indigenization, the need for a system that adheres to the DNA of our country. Some of the other areas that we need to look at, number one, we need to look at the area of space technology. The space technology becomes extremely crucial from a next generation communication perspective. It also becomes extremely crucial from a national security perspective. The space technology has given several pointers for safety of public. Today, the entire meteorology department, the predictions made by the meteorology department, for example, is because of satellite images. As we proceed tomorrow, the space technology is basically going to help us in the 6G communication, high speed communication. Today, the mobile phone that you use, use what we call as 4G communication. And very shortly, we will have a 5G communication. Then comes the 6G communication. When we go to the 6G communication, probably in next three to four year time frame, satellites become extremely important. There have been a lot of efforts in India to develop satellites at a lower cost but higher efficiency. Youth interested in aeronautical engineering, in rocket science, should start imagining the type of systems that are needed for the country and start building them. The next important area that we are looking at is medical science and technology. Today, 37% of Nobel laureates are what we may call as physician scientist, person who has an understanding of both engineering and medicine. There is a need for the engineers to learn about medicine and doctors to learn about engineering. And we are basically 
in a very very important point of time where engineering and medicine has to merge and take the next step. We are importing almost all of our medical equipments. This import should basically reduce or ideally should become zero. We have our traditional schools of medicine, the Ayush, the Ayurveda, Yunani and Siddha. Lot of inspirations need to be derived from these Indian schools of medicine that could give much more broader perspective specifically in the areas of communicable diseases and cause and effect relationship. What I mean by cause and effect relationship is understanding the cause for an effect. Some simple examples are sugar caused diabetes, smoking causes cancer, alcohol cancer, causes cancer. This type of cause and effect relationship need to be understood. The Indian school of medicine, the diagnosis procedures and even the surgical procedures could throw a lot of light on how the modern medicine in the coming years should be, should aspire to, should work, should be discovered, the treatment process. Many things can come from a proper understanding of our Indian School of Medicines. So we are looking at a aggregation of contemporary medical processes, contemporary technologies, the Indian School of Medicine and see what is the best we can get out of these combinations. Medical science and technology therefore becomes extremely crucial and every doctor should aspire to learn a lot about engineering, a lot about the devices that they are using and start imagining what it means for this device to be made in India. What are the challenges? What would be the obstructions? After all, we have, again I repeat, 140 crore people and many of them would need, at any, and almost every one of them would need a medical assistance in their life, at least once. Imagine the enormous amount of experience a doctor in India can have and these experiences must be translated into globally recognized, globally useful products that would bring lot of proud and Atmanirbharta to our country. The last area that we need to concentrate is on agriculture. Natural organic farming is something which will give you a poison free food. After all, why do we earn? Why are we working? Why are we employed? Just to fill our six inch stomach. And we need to aspire to fill that six inch stomach with poison free, completely natural, organic food. There needs a lot of technology intervention to make the life of a farmer much easy, much productive. Agriculture, which was one of the major profession of our country, today unfortunately the number of people enthusiastic about agriculture has been reducing. There has been a continuous migration from the village to the towns, from the towns to the cities. The major hit comes on agriculture. There are very few who can take agriculture as a profession, agriculture as their career, agriculture as their job. This was not the case long time earlier. When we want to do organic farming, of course we need a lot of patience. We need help of the, not only some of the organic materials and processes and manpower, but also our cattle. Cow dung, cow urine, goat dung, goat urine, goat excretia, these are all very, very important to enrich the soil. So there needs to be a very focused effort in bringing these things together and 
bring in a very, very important revolution in the country, namely the Community Natural Farming Initiative. This is a community effort and this needs to be a revolution. A focused attempt in this direction shall not only reduce the cost of farming, but at the same time it will give you rich food and at the same time this can also become a, a profession. We need to re-establish India as a country with agriculture as one of the significant professions. This makes India self-sufficient in food and that is very, very important today. Several things come along with agriculture. If I want to do good agriculture, I need to manage my water resources well. I need to look at climatic conditions in a much more deeper perspective. So all these things will come together with one noble goal of trying to double or even triple a farmer's income through natural farming. These three, in my opinion, are very important priority areas which can take India to a, a technology supreme country. I am sure all of us are energized to take this challenge, we get inspiration from the deeds of Swami Vivekananda to march ahead and develop technologies that will improve the life, way of living for our whole fellow, our brothers and sisters of our country, our fellow citizens of our country, and at the same time establish India as a supreme leader in technology in the next 25 years to come. With all this, I wish all the youth very best and I wish that they become successful in their professional career. At the same time, do their ultimate service to our beloved nation. Jai Hind!